Hi guys, Nia here again. We're about to get the answers for this week's questions that you've posted on Mr. Granger's interactive series. Mr. Granger, there are three questions from Mr. Gavin James. The first one is, most of the streets and roads in Georgetown and Linden I have used are poorly lit or have no lighting, creating opportunity for a crime against innocent users. Would light in these towns, villages, and city streets be a priority for your administration? And how do you propose to have this done in the shortest time? Well, I've already taken action in this regard because the way to do it is ensure that the communities themselves, there's 71 uh, municipalities and what we call um, NDCs, Neighborhood Democratic Councils in existence. In addition to that, there are 10 regions. That means there are 81 local authorities in all. And unless the people themselves elect the councillors, elect the officials, we'll never get progress. So I've taken the initiative to ensure that local government elections are held. I've called on President Ramatar to announce a date by the 15th of September. And we are confident that once elections are held, we'll get councillors who know the conditions in these communities. And once they're in position, they'll be able to improve the conditions, um, particularly street lighting, but you also have other problems like uh, solid waste management, drainage and irrigation, um, play fields for young people. So we regard local government elections being the start of improving these communities. The second question from Mr. Gavin James is, the Guyana National Service provided a very, full, very meaningful skills development for thousands in the past. Are you considering reinstituting this service and how different would it be to meet the needs of today's world? Well, my experience is um, that I have been in involved in the setting up of the National Service um, over you know, 40 years ago. And the reason for National Service was to ensure that young people gain employment and it worked. But the PPP was always opposed to National Service and in the year 2000 they completely abolished the National Service. This means that young people who drop out of school don't have an opportunity, they don't have a safety net, they don't have the chance, the second chance to get back into employment. So we have considered this and we've had um, a new proposal called YES, the Youth Empowerment Scheme. And uh, once we are in power, we will ensure that young people get that opportunity. Right now there's 7,000 dropouts drop um, from primary and secondary schools every year. So we are confident that a scheme similar to the National Service would be useful in allowing these young people to be retrained so they can get back into the world of work. So yes, we are going to have a scheme. Um, what is actually going to be called, I can't say at this point in time, but it will take young people, boys and girls, give them a second chance, give them education and training so they can get to work. The third question from Mr. Gavin James is, it would appear from what is happening with the present regime that the people of Guyana constitutional rights to elect their representatives can at time be trampled on. What are you going to do about this breach? Will you seek to have reforms and have set dates for local government elections and regional and general elections so as to facilitate GCOM in its preparedness for elections? other relevant authorities, interest groups, citizens, political parties, so that they are not left in the women fancy of any administration's timing? How do you plan to empower the NDCs and town and city councils? You've done that. I told President Ramatar in no uncertain terms that by Monday the 15th of September, he must name a date. We are confident that once elections are held, local government elections are held, the people will be able to speak and elect their own representatives to run those communities. So I've done that. I am aware of the situation in all of these municipalities, as I said, there's 71, and then you can add the 10 regions. And once that is done, the people will take responsibility. We have already struggled for over a decade to ensure that local government laws are reformed. We've struggled to bring those uh, laws to the National Assembly. It is the president of this country, Donald Ramatar, who has not assented to one of the bills. It is the PPP parliamentarians who have not um, supported the 
implementation of the local government election by 1st of August. But the Partnership for National Unity has done everything humanly possible and we're continuing to push the envelope, we're continuing to insist that President Ramachandra acts in accordance with the Constitution and in accordance with his own promise to the people of this country. Everybody wants local government elections and the APNU is leading the way. The next question comes from Ms. Odess Brianco. Mr. Granger, the issue of youth unemployment is a major problem within our society, whether you're qualified or not. It is very difficult to find a job and due to this, a lot of our qualified youths leave the country in search of greener pastures, resulting in brain drain, further hampering the development of our nation. My question to you is, how would you resolve the above issues of unemployment and brain drain if elected president? Well, there are two issues here. Um, one is the persons who are not qualified, and the second is the person who are qualified. I'm aware of the problem, as I said. Yes. Um, one writer has already proposed we introduce some scheme similar to the National Service. What, I, what I've said before and what I'll say again is that any university graduate under an APN administration will be guaranteed employment within one year of graduation. So if you graduate in November 2014, by November 2015, we will find you a job. That is what the APN has promised young people. But young people have to accept responsibility themselves. They have to go to school. I cannot commit myself to employ people who don't go to school, you know, people who cannot write, you know, who cannot spell cat or bat or dog. So it's a two-way street. And I would like to urge young people to stay in school. Don't drop out. Qualify. Get to university or get to some tertiary institution, some technical institute, and ensure that you are qualified for the world of work. Once you do that, APN will ensure that you get employment. This is a huge country. We are the biggest um, English-speaking Caribbean country. And when you think of engineering, when you think of mathematics and science and agriculture, there is no Caribbean country like Guyana, and I'm sure that our population, which is shrinking, you said people are leaving because of brain drain and all that. I want people to stay, and I'm going to ensure that the country they stay in is one that's going to guarantee them a good life. The next question comes from Mr. Robert Bacchus Bino. Should the government resort to judicial maneuvering after a no confidence vote? What would the likely joint opposition response be? How best can the joint opposition communicate a message of civil disobedience and mobilize peaceful protests without the movement being labeled by the government as one group of citizens against another? Well, we've already started, as I said, um, we've sent advice to the government. I wouldn't call it an ultimatum. We've told um, President Ramachar that he has an obligation to name a date for elections. And if he does not uh, comply with the Constitution, if he does not comply with the decisions of the National Assembly, we are going to embark on legitimate action. What that action will be depends on how long it takes to respond to my letter and the nature of his response. But once he does not say something, something else will happen. There will be a consequence. And this is what he must have, and this is what the people of Guyana must look forward to. I'm not going to say what I'm going to do, but what I know is that unless President Ramatar complies with the Constitution, there will be a cost, and he will have to bear responsibility for that cost. He'll have to bear responsibility for the consequences of not having elections, uh, local government elections, for 20 years. Mr. Granger, the final question comes from Mr. Robin Mutain. Honorable David Arthur Granger, we the people are aware that the combined opposition is totally against the three million Guyana dollars benefit package that the past presidents receive. My question to you is, when you achieve the presidency, will the legislation be forgotten and swept under the mat so that you can benefit from it when you demit office? Or will you change this legislation when you have the power to do so? Well, I've already um, made my position very clear. A partnership has made the position very clear. We don't want to see former presidents living like paupers, but we took action because we want to ensure that there's a limit, there's a ceiling. Right now, the president, uh, the last president, the immediate past president of this country, Bar Jagdeo, does not have a limit. 
you know, there's no limit to the amount of cars, the amount of staff, the amount of holidays, you know, um, to the amount of flights you can only take. There's just no limit at all. It's a blank check. And our party, APNU, Partnership for National Unity, has already introduced legislation. And President Ramatar has refused to assent to that legislation. What will David Granger do? I'll assent to that legislation. There must be a ceiling. And um, it happens in every country. You just can't have a limitless uh, spending um, by the former president. So please be assured that I'm a man of moderate desires. And I will ensure that a new bill is brought forward, putting a cap on presidential benefits. For you to be a part of this interactive series, all you need to do is go to Mr. Granger's Facebook page and post your questions on his timeline.